Hello, in this video we're going to go through just two really quick items, and hopefully they're quick. I, I will say that students tend to get hung up on the, this part of it, um, but you just need to become familiar with your computer and your operating system, and um, it should be something easy to pick up. So we're going to talk about downloading and importing data files into our studio. For the class, you will most commonly be provided the data in a CSV file. Sometimes we'll enter data directly into our studio, but often we will um, create a file for you. That'll be a CSV file. You have to download that onto your computer or a computer, and then move that into your working directory if you're using uh, regular RStudio. If you're using RStudio Cloud, you have to upload that to the cloud prior to um, being able to, to start to work on that. And so I'm gonna go through how to do that uh, real shortly here. Okay. So <clears throat> again, we will provide the data files on the learning management system, or in this case, Blackboard. Right? And so um, <clears throat> in this example, we have a data set on the survival of moths that will be used in class in some of the sections. So we can see that class survival data right here I can simply click on it and it will start to download here okay so again on a PC I've downloaded that file if I go to my downloads here's my download folder right so downloads right here we can see class survival data in my downloads right that's the default location for downloads unless you've changed it on your computer if you've changed it on your computer you're probably not having an issue with this because you know more about your operating system than I do what we want to make sure is that we take this file from where it's downloaded and put it into our folder that's our working that we use as our working directory. So in this case, you can um, you can cut it, you can copy it, and then I open another window and I've already got the data here. We can see class survival data, but I have to make sure the file leaves where it's downloaded and is put into the folder that I use as my working directory in our studio. Okay? So again, whether you click and drag it, you copy and paste it, you cut and paste it, it has to go from where it's downloaded into the folder that you use as your working directory, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I would open up our studio. So here's our studio. Again, the three windows, the console, the environment, and the plots window, file, new file, our script, right? Then the first thing I do is set my working directory, session, set working directory, choose directory. Um, again, for this semester, I'm using a folder called RStudio SP24. So I open that and again, it spits it out right here. I can type this command into the script and it'll do the same thing. All right. Again, R Studio using forward slashes instead of backslash, right? The next thing I need to do is import the data set. But again, I have to make sure the data set leaves the download folder and is in the folder I just set as my working directory. So I can see that it's right here. Again, I already have it, so I don't need to move it, right? But you who will be downloading the file for the first time need to move it out of the downloads location and into your working directory folder. Again, I recommend creating a folder in a specific location for this class. And that's where you will put all of your data files, your inputs, your outputs, your script files. Okay? If I check my file tab here, we can see all the files I have in my directory already. And again, I can just import it by, in this case, I'm just going to name it data, right? So <clears throat> the first portion of this line is simply naming a, a new object. In this case, it's going to be a, a data frame <coughs> or a data set. And then less than dash is assigned to, and then I'm going to go read.csv because we're always going to give you the data in a CSV file if we don't enter it directly, right? And then... 
I have to type out the name of the file in quotations exactly as it is spelled and if I double check my spelling here class underscore survival underscore data capitalizing and lowercase have to match dot CSV and quotes okay. and now if I run that I can see in my environment window now I have something called data it's a hundred observations of two variables right and if I type view again capital V it should open up that data okay. now you have downloaded the file moved it to your folder that you set as your working directory opened up our studio set your working directory and imported the data from a csv file now you're ready to go with descriptive statistics visualization and inferential statistics whatever we ask you to do okay for those of you that operate um, mac as your os it'll be a little bit different right so again we're downloading the file from blackboard um, that will typically go to a downloads folder in max we typically instead of using the, the file explorer to find it you might have to use what's called just the finder right but you need to find where your mac downloaded that file right so you need to move the csv file from the location your computer downloaded it into to the location that you have or the folder that you're using as your working directory again whether it's dragging or cutting and pasting um, but again on max you might have to go to the finder and and figure that out but you need to figure out where the Mac has downloaded your folder right um, again when we set our file path or our working directory we want to make sure this path here matches where we've put that file um, if we click on files you should actually see the CSV file in there right once we set our working directory our studio can see the files that are in there um, and so if you've Put the file in there before opening our studio and setting your working directory it should pop up if you don't if you move it afterwards <coughs> you're gonna probably run into some issues um, and or it won't see it right away because it hasn't refreshed that folder okay there are other ways to import data sets so if you go into the environment pane you can click on this um, import data set from text and search for your file um, the tricky part there is that it then brings that in under the original file name which can be sort of uh, long and bulky at times so the read CSV really is the um, easiest way to do it because then we can name it right away uh, otherwise you have to go through another line of code to rename your data file or you have to use that long file name every single time so only use this import data set from text as a emergency option we really want to get you to downloading the file moving it and then um, setting your working directory and importing it as a read C from read CSV read.csv right so we want we, we want to read that file and that allows us to rename it right away rather than importing it and then having to rename it again it's a little bit of a longer process <clears throat> and more a longer process or more steps to a process means more opportunities for mistakes right again once it's imported we should see it in our environment window and if we type view we should be able to see the data or we can um, look at the structure of the data with str okay if you're running the cloud version so here's cloud here <coughs> again um, we would hit new project this would load after a while i would open up the script right you're going to need to download the file onto a computer first and then we're going to go upload files to server and then we're just going to browse um, oops we browse the file to upload we don't want to change the target directory we want to browse the file to upload go to our downloads class survival data click ok now we see it here right and i can import it the same way so i'm going to name it data lesson dash assign to read.cs csv 
class underscore survival. Oops. See, I gotta spell it right. Underscore data dot CSV. Okay. Then I run that line, and now I can see data right here. 100 observations of two variables. Again, view data. Run that line, and it brings up the same data. Okay. So the the really the only difference in our Studio Cloud or Posit Cloud, which it's called now, is is you don't set a working directory because you're working from their server but you have to upload the file. So you've got to download the file from Blackboard and then upload the file to their cloud server or you cannot do anything, right? So you need to probably do that outside of lab because if you're using your, your device that you can't download and upload for files from, then that's not gonna help out, right? You need the file uploaded before you can begin to work with it. So that might mean doing it in the computer lab before you come to lab. Okay, hopefully that helps.